and uh, we deeply appreciate those that are worshiping with us online and those that uh, are following us on our various social media platforms. We thank you very much for all that you do to support the church. May the good Lord bless you in return in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to know that we are God's children. We are not ordinary. Because we have been saved by grace through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So be happy that you are a child of God. I'm so excited. I'm glad that I am a child of God. If God had not saved me, my life would have been useless. But today, to God be the glory, I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Last Sunday, I shared with you on a topic titled, God is our Father. Amen. Amen. That was to celebrate Father's Day. I consider it a great privilege to be a child of God. There's nothing that gives me more joy to know that I am a child of God. I have an inheritance with the Father. Amen. And that is who you are also. As a child of God, you have an inheritance with the Father, the creator of the universe. It means what is, is his is yours. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. If I were to bless you, if I were to give you money, I can only give you money based on my income. Amen. Amen. And God is able to supply us our needs according to his riches. Amen. Amen. He's not basing his supply on the economy of this country. He's not basing his supply on the situation around him, around you, but rather he's basing it, based his supply based on his own constituency, based on his abilities. Amen. He will supply our needs according to his riches in glory. Therefore, keep trusting God. Keep having confidence in God because our Father, He loves us more than we love ourselves. We love our children, but God loves even our children more than we love them. Praise the Lord. Amen. When we cannot reach them, He can reach them. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is our Father that cares. He has plans for us. Amen. Amen. Plans of good, most of evil, to give you an expectation. He said, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can imagine. Amen. I may imagine something, oh, I want to get a, a, a rose rust. I may imagine it because I know it. But God is able to do much more than that. Amen. Amen. Because he is God and because he is our Father. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to be excited and be happy because God is taking care of you. It may be delayed in your eyes, but I want you to know that the time is called processing time. Amen. Amen. Like I always tell you, I've told you before, if you go to the bank and you put in your ATM card into the ATM machine, you punch in your number, your PIN number, he asks you what you want, you want to withdraw, you want to withdraw $3,000, another person wants to withdraw $200. Amen. Amen. And the machine will say, your transaction is processing. The time to process $200 and the time to process the discharge of $3,000 cannot be the same. Amen. Amen. The bigger, the, the, the more the delay, the bigger the blessing. Are you with me? Yes. The longer the delay, the bigger the processing time. And I want you to hold on to God. Don't truncate your blessings by doubting Him. Because if the machine says your transaction is processing, because the other person has got his phone and left, you decide to stop your machine, it means you will not get your, discharge, your, your money. Not so. So wait, because God is with us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today I will be sharing with us on a topic titled The Overcomer. The Overcomer. An overcomer is a person 
who succeeds in dealing with or gaining control over some problems or difficulties. For you to overcome, for you to be described as an overcomer, you would have been able to uh, succeed in the problem that is facing you. If you succeed in it, you become an overcomer. Amen. Amen. As children of God, we were created as overcomers. Amen. God said to uh, Jeremiah, even while you were you, before you were forming your mother's womb, I knew you and I consecrated you. Amen. Amen. So you were born an overcomer. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are a winner. To be an overcomer is to be victorious. It is to win at every life situation. Winning means achieving the desired goals. Praise the Lord. To be an overcomer is to accomplish God's purpose for creating you. Amen. Amen. That is the main thing. When you fulfill God's purpose for creating you, you can be super described. You can be described as a super overcomer. And let me tell you what the purpose of which God created you. He created you to have dominion. Amen. Amen. To succeed. He created you to be fruitful. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31. Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 31. Then the, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Amen. Amen. He said, let us create Henry. Let us create John. And let John and Henry have dominion. Let them be overcomers. Let them have control. Amen. Amen. Have control over what? Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over livestock, and over all, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Praise the Lord. Amen. God has given us the power to have dominion over everything over every creature of his creature and over every challenge that we may face. Amen. Amen. If, you are, if you don't have dominion yet, it means you are not fulfilling God's purpose. And it is his will for you to fulfill his purpose. Amen. Amen. The Bible says it to itself. So God created man in his own image. He created you in his own image. He created me in his own image because he had dominion over everything Therefore, I, his creature, you, his creature, not just his creature, you that have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are overcomers and you have dominion over everything. And God said to man, eventually, and God blessed them and said to them, Amen. Amen. He blessed them. When Isaac blessed Jacob, Jacob became prosperous. Amen. Remember that Abraham had, for instance, one son, as it were, the official son of Abraham is Isaac. Then Jacob had, Isaac had two, Esau and Jacob. Jacob had what? Twelve. Praise the Lord. You see the effect? Having dominion because Isaac blessed Jacob. Jacob had twelve sons. These 12 sons grew, they migrated into Egypt. By the time they were leaving Egypt, they were 600,000 men. No women, no children were counted. Dominion. While Joseph was in prison, he was still the captain in the prison. While he was in Potiphar's house, he was in charge of every of his business. That's a guy that had dominion. When Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were serving the other, other the, the, uh, Babylonian, they were in charge. They had dominion. And why did they have dominion? They have faith in God that never changed. The song said, God has done it before. Why will he not do it now? He never failed me before. So why will he fail now? So if failure is glaring at you, 
Ten failure that you are an overcomer. That God, that the God that did it before will do it again. Think about what God had done for you before, which no man could do, which you couldn't have done by yourself, and have tell the devil that is telling you that God is delaying, tell him that God did that, he will do it again. Praise the Lord. Why? Because he created you to be an overcomer. And God said, Behold, I have given you everything. Amen. There was a Christian brother that came from Nigeria to this country. He was, he, as he was trying to, try to navigate the system, do work in factory, struggling to write his exams and all that, he was just complaining. God, why? He God, why this? And God said to him, my friend, but are you hungry? But are you hungry? He has given us everything to eat. The Bible says that the best of the earth they never found, but God provides for them. Therefore, you as a child, you will never be hungry. See, I'm giving you everything for food. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And every tree, you shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and every beast of heaven, and every that creeps on the earth, everything that has bread, I have given every green plant to you for food. Amen. What a great God. Because he wants you to have dominion. Because you are an overcomer. If you don't accept the position you are that is given to you, you will not function in it. Am I clear? If I call you, if you have been trained as a teacher, you have been employed as a teacher, but when you get to the, your place of employment, you choose to be to perform another role. Will you be a teacher then? Instead of going to the classroom to teach, you are probably in the washroom, cleaning the washroom, or controlling traffic for children to come to school. So knowing that you are a child of God, begin to assume your positions as children of God. Amen. Remember the story of the prodigal son? The prodigal son wasted his father's money. When he came back, his father accepted him. The senior brother who was in the house, who was obedient to the father, had access to everything, but he never used it. Amen. I'm going to begin to assume your positions as children of God and as overcomers. As children of God, you have access to your father's property. Amen. Amen. Overcomers are true followers of Jesus Christ who successfully resist the power and temptation to the world standard and who hold fast to faith in Christ to the end. Amen. In this church, we always emphasize on being a true Christian, being a true follower. Because some people are followers, but they are not true. And that is why Jesus will say, say, he said, on that day they will come to me and say, I cast out demons in your name, I pray in your name, say, go away, you walk out of iniquity, I know you not. So for you to be recognized, you must be a true believer. And that's why I say, overcomers are true followers of Christ who successfully resist the power to temptation and the work of darkness and hold fast to the end. Maybe you held fast to it last week, or last year you were a believer, you did all you should do, but this year, because things are not better for you, or, or because things are even not more difficult for you, you decide to slow down. No. Overcomers are those that run to the end. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to, the Bible, I want you to know that you need to resist the temptation to sin. Praise the Lord. He does not turn away when times are difficult, nor does he or she seek help from other sources except from the Word of God. A true believer does not turn away from God when things are difficult. He does not seek help or assistance from other means. Amen. He holds firmly to God. The greatest challenge or problems that the devil will bring to us is to make us enemies of our Father. It's to make us sin against God. 
So the greatest challenge you need to overcome is the temptation to sin. If you are able to overcome the temptation to sin and practice righteousness, I want to assure you that you will succeed in everything that you do. You will be a total and a complete overcomer if you are able to resist the temptation to sin. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And why does the devil tempt us to sin? Because he wants to create enmity between us and the Father in heaven. The Bible says on faithful creation, do you not know that friendship with the world is a enmity with God? Whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. The devil is not challenging you because you are beautiful, because you are handsome, because you are rich, because you are intelligent. All that is, the only reason he's pursuing us is because he wants us to sin against God so that we can be deprived of the inheritance that we have in God in heaven and the peace that we should enjoy on earth here. Amen. Amen. When Jesus was born, the angel said, Peace to men of good will. Amen. People who don't have Christ in them do not have peace. Find out. They don't have peace. They are always afraid. They are always in trouble. Amen. Therefore, you must resist every temptation to sin. The temptation to sin is very common. It's everywhere these days. But resist. What is sin? Sin is every for any form of disobedience to the word of God. Sin is every form of disobedience to the word of God. It might be minor, it might be major. But as long as it breaks God's commandment, it is sin. People may give it one name, a beautiful name. Somebody is committing adultery. They will say it's having an affair. Call it the name it is called. It is adultery. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 A young lady that is not married or a young man that is not married, is not married they are living in sexual immoralities. They will say they are having fun. It is sin. Every act of disobedience against the word of God is sin. And you know what? Sin is a killer. And the result of every unconfessed sin is total separation from God the Father. Are you with me? The consequences of every sin that we commit and we refuse to repent of, we refuse to depart from, is total separation from God. You don't want that. No good child wants to break relationship with the parents. You want to break relationship with the Father. As a true follower of Christ, you want to maintain a good relationship with God. Amen. Amen. You will be victorious and an overcomer in every challenge of life if you are able to overcome sin. This you cannot do on your own. The good news is that God has given us the power through the Holy Spirit by the knowledge of the Word of God to be able to resist sin and overcome sin. Amen. Amen. Resisting sin is not something we can do on our own. Or I will figure it out. I can cope. No. The Bible didn't say you should resist sin. It didn't say you should figure out. He said you should resist sin. Wrong like Joseph. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the grace God has given to us and the power he has given to us to overcome sin. And this power comes through the Holy Spirit and knowledge of the word of God. That is why in this church and this ministry, we keep stressing on the need to study the word of God, to read the Bible, to be part of our Bible studies, classes, and be present at church to be taught the undiluted word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Romans chapter 3, verses 23. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. The Bible says that the wages of sin is dead. Everybody fears death. Nobody wants to die. But the result you get from sinning is death. The Bible further tells us that the devil 
And that, that every person that commits sin is a child of the devil. Amen. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. It started by saying, see what great love the Father has given us that we should be called the children of God. Amen. So we are. That is why I have the confidence to say, I am a child of God. The reason why the world does not know us is that it does not know him. So don't be surprised that the unbelievers, they don't respect you or they don't like you. It's because they don't like your father. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be as yet has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Because we shall see him as he truly is. Amen. Amen. What we are going to be when Jesus comes, we cannot comprehend it yet. But the good thing is that when he comes, we shall be like him. Amen. Amen. And anyone who does hopes in, in this purifies himself because he's pure. If you want to be like Jesus when he comes, you must resist sin as an overcomer and purify yourself because the Jesus we are expecting, the Jesus that we are following is pure. Anyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Amen. Amen. You know that he appeared in order to take away sin. And in him, there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Amen. There are people that fall into sin. They immediately know. When a Christian falls into sin, the Spirit of God prompts him, immediately knows, and he repents. But an unbeliever takes pleasure in sin. If he has not committed sin, he is not satisfied. For example, a drunkard. He's not happy when he's not drunk. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's perpetually in it. And the reason why they keep sinning is because they don't know God. That is where you and I come in. We have been sent as ambassadors of Christ to tell the world about the consequences of sin. And how to be free from sin. But God's grace, in the month of July, we shall engage ourselves in evangelism to reach out to the unrich, to see how we can bring them to the knowledge of God. But he said, No one who abides in him keeps sinning. Hallelujah. But he said, Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. What is righteousness? <laughs> righteousness is holiness. It's a life that is acceptable to God. You have to practice it. You have to practice to tell the truth. You have to practice to pray. You have to practice to read the Bible. You have to practice to do good. When you do this, when you practice it, you become perfect in it because they say practice makes perfect. When you practice goodness, you become good. And when you are good, You'll be described as righteous because our God is righteous. Amen. But verse 8 says, But whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. So when you practice lying, you become perfect in lying. So you go lie without thinking. You ask the lie about everything. Ask them their name, they will tell you lies. Ask them their age, they will tell you lies. Every, because they have practiced lying over the years, they have become professional liars. And why? Because they are children of the devil, and the devil lied and sinned from the beginning. Amen. Amen. The reason the Son of Man appeared was to destroy the work of the enemy. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, we have the power to overcome the temptations and trials to sin, because Jesus has come to destroy the power of the enemies. The power of the enemy is destroyed in the lives of those that have handed their lives to Christ. If you have not handed your life over to Christ, you will struggle 
to resist sin and you will not be able. You keep falling into it because you are trying to do it by your own power. Therefore, my dear friends, if you are not yet born again, you have not made any contact relationship, you have not developed a, 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 a cordial relationship with Christ, please do so now, so that He will give you the power to overcome sin, to resist sin, and when you have this power, you become an overcomer, as an overcomer, you become victorious. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says in verse 9, No one born of God makes practice of sinning. For God abides in him, and he cannot keep sinning because he is born of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Amen. Amen. We are all created by God, but we are not all children of God. The Bible says, they that are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Those that practice righteousness are children of God. Those that practice wickedness and sin, they are children of the devil. So it is for you to choose whose child you want to be. I want to be a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We have victory over sin through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We have victory over sin through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6 is going to be our anchor scripture. We'll try as much as possible to digest it. Uh, if we're not able, we'll, 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 we'll take it to next week. Romans chapter 6 from verses 1 to 23. He said, this is good. He uh, said, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? Praise the Lord. Verse 1. Romans chapter 6 verses, 20, verses 1 to 23. Say, what shall we say then? I we to continue in sin that grace may abound? A lot of Christians have abused grace. They sin in the name of grace. But the Bible says, are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, no. Amen. It should not be so. How can we who are dead to sin still live in it? In order for you or for us to be able to overcome sin, Resist sin and overcome sin, we must crucify our flesh. We must be dead to sin. Dead men don't bite. Dead men don't feel. Dead men are not proud. Dead men will not remember someone that offended him. If you want to forget, if you want to be able to resist the sin of unforgiveness, be dead. If you want to resist, resist the sin of selfishness, be dead. If you want to be able to resist the sin of sexual immorality, be dead to it. Dead men don't commit sin. Amen. So you must kill your flesh and the desire to commit sin and you by that will become holy. You will become purified, holy and acceptable to God. And the Bible says, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God to present your bodies to God a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him, which is your spiritual worship. A man that is dead cannot commit sin. Paul said, I crucify my flesh. I'm no longer the one that lives, the Christ that lives through me. Amen. Amen. Let us crucify our flesh. Your taste and desire for sin, control it. Amen. We were buried, verse 4, we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Christ has been raised. We have, in our baptism, we, 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 we died with Christ. We will also rise with Him if we continue to resist sin. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 10 said, For the dead for the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But for the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let sin therefore reign, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passion. Amen. Christ has died for us. 
You died with him at baptism. Do not practice sin any longer so that you will also be raised with him. Verse 15 says, What then are we to sin because we are not under the law but under grace by no means? Do you not know that if you, if you, pre, if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, so you are slaves to the one whom you obey. Neither is sin which leads to death or of obedience which leads to righteousness. Whom are you committing yourself to? To Christ or to the devil? When you commit yourself to Christ, you live in righteousness. If you commit yourself to the devil, you will live in sin. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus has the power to destroy sin. In verse 22 it says, But know that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God. The fruit you get leads to sanctification and to its end, eternal life. Amen. The fruit, the reward, we are told that the wages of sin is there. But the reward for righteousness is sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Sanctification and eternal life. That is the goal. And it is only through Jesus Christ that we can overcome. In verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 So it is only in Jesus Christ that we have the power and ability to overcome sin. You will overcome every other challenge and problem in life if you can overcome sin. I want to emphasize it again. Every other thing, every other challenge, every other problem that you have, you will overcome them if you are able to overcome sin. And you can overcome sin through the gift of the Holy Spirit which the God has given to the church. Through knowledge of the Word of God. Jesus is the one that gives power to overcome sin. And our victory is in Christ. Not in any other person, not in any other source, not by our own abilities, but by the grace which God has given to us. Praise the Lord. You know, we are saved by grace. It is not because of anything that we have done. It is by grace that we have been saved, as recorded in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Amen. The grace is there and the faith is there. Faith is the word of God. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Saved uh, save by grace through faith in faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Amen. Do not commend yourself. Do not arrogate perfection to yourself. It is by the grace of God that we have been saved. It is a gift. Amen. But we should value this gift. If you don't value the gift that you have, it will be taken from you. If you do not appreciate it, another person will take it. Amen. Therefore, my dear friends, value the grace that you have. If you value grace, you will not sin. Amen. Why many people think that grace is uh, enables us to overcome sin? Yes, grace helps us not to live in sin. That was why Paul said, "I did not make shipwreck of my grace. I did not abuse the grace of God that was given to me." A lot of people have abused grace, but you don't be one of those that will, be, will abuse grace. Be one of those that will not. Disgrace the grace that is on your life. Amen. Amen. You know how you can disgrace the grace in your life? You see sin, you commit it and say, I will go and repent. You have disgraced the sin. You have misunderstanding with somebody. You know you should leave. You should know you should not fight. You fight. I say, let's settle it after this. And go and repent. 
May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. At that point, you have disgraced the grace that is in your life. Amen. Not by not result of work, so let any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are God's workmanship. God is still working in us. He's not done with me yet. He's not done with you yet. He's still pruning me. He's still training me. He's still training you. He's still cutting off the excesses in your life so that you'll be able to work with him. He's still working on you. You are his workmanship. Don't think you have arrived. Oh, I know it has been the Lord for the past 40 years. I've been preaching for... You have not arrived. The devil has not lost hope in you. Amen. The devil believes that the bishop will commit adultery tomorrow. The devil believes that I will fall tomorrow and is making efforts. If you are not aware of this, you are just ignorant of the work of the enemies. Praise the Lord. We are workmanship. Continue to accept the pruning. Continue to accept the discipline. Continue to accept the training. And ask for the grace to be able to follow up with the training in obedience. The grace of God enables us to overcome sin. Grace is, however, not a license to sin. Even though it enables us to overcome sin, it is not license to sin. Romans chapter uh, 6, which we discussed before, said, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. Let us not continue in sin. But rather, what should we do to sin? We should resist sin. The Bible says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So, first of all, you have to submit to God. Let God be the Lord. Let Jesus be the Lord and master of your life. Let him take control. Consult him before you take every decision. Then he becomes the Lord of your life. Begin to guide you. As he's guiding you, you are able to resist the devil. And when you resist the devil, you are able to overcome sin and you become an overcomer. Praise the Lord. We must rely on the grace of God. Amen. In Ephesians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 6 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 6 to 10. Here Paul was addressing the brethren. Paul had a reason to boast. After he had seen the heavens, he has experienced God in a greater dimension, he had been blessed, he thought he could boast. But he cautioned himself. Praise the Lord. Verse 6. Though if I should, should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that one, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. Praise the Lord. That was Paul. Paul had a reason to say, I was this, I am this, I have seen this, I have seen that, but he cautioned himself. So that you will not overestimate him. Your overestimation of him may make you replace him with God. Just as many people have replaced God with their pastors today. Amen. You hear people say, my pastor say, my pastor say, they never hear say, the word of God says, this is what the word of God says. Every little thing they want to see the pastor. Amen. Because they do not know God. I want you in this church to know God. I want us to be disciples, follow fellow disciples of Christ. Each of us bringing our gifts, our talents, our resources for the growth and development of the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Paul said, I will not boast. So that, so to keep me from be, becoming consistent because of the super suppressing the greatness of the revelation, a tongue was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Praise the Lord. Do you understand what that means? Paul said he had a reason to boast. But he will not boast one so that others do not get confused, so that he does not become proud. And because God is still working on him. God allowed the devil 
to put a thorn in his life. Praise the Lord. He had a thorn. He said, to keep me from becoming conceited. Conceited means to be proud or arrogant. Because of the surprising greatness of the revelation, a thorn was given to me. Because of the knowledge of God he had, a thorn was given to him to control him. To check him. Three times. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this. That he should lead me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Praise the Lord. Don't trust your own. Trust in God. Ask God for help. My power is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Amen. You will not know the use of a doctor until you are sick. Yeah. Not so. Yeah. Yeah. When you are sick, a doctor comes, does all he's supposed to do, and you become who is that. That doctor is good. Amen. Amen. It is in your weakness, in your sickness, that you realize the power of the doctor. It is in your weakness that you realize the power of faith, the power of the word of God, and the power in the grace of God. Amen. Let me take that again. Three times, verse eight. Three times I pleaded with the Lord. He prayed. Paul prayed. He pleaded with the Lord to remove this tongue. I don't know what the tongue was, but some people said he was sick. Some people say he had, he had eye trouble. Some Bible scholars say he had Paul had eye troubles. That's not the case. But he had an issue. He prayed for the dead to rise. He prayed for the cripple to walk. I catch him from the poor, uh, uh, body of Paul. He prayed for the poor, body of Paul. Healed people. This same Paul prayed to God three times to remove this thorn. And God said, forget it. No. I will not remove it. Why? So that you will appreciate my grace. Praise the Lord. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Praise the Lord. He said he will boast of his weakness, he will boast of his problems, so that the power of God will be made manifest. It is in his problem that God will glorify himself. It is in our problems that God will glorify himself. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. For the sake of Christ, then I am contained with weakness, insult, hardship, persecution, and calamity. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When the grace of God is working fully in you, you will not mind being insulted because you are a child of God. You will not mind persecution hardship, harassment because you are a child of God. They call you names. You will not because they are calling you names, holy, holy. Are you the only one here? Others are doing it. You are not others, I've always told you. Know who you are. What are you? Who are you? You are a child of God. Praise the Lord. Because of this grace, <laughs> You'll be made strong, you'll be able to resist insult, you'll not count it as anything. Hardship, there could be hardship. Hardship. You don't have what you, want, you need or what you want at a particular time. This could be very hard. There could be ill health. Amen. But when you appreciate the grace of God, you will glorify His name. Amen. When my house got born some years ago, like 2018, I went to um, to buy something from the shop. We we're talking. I said, let me buy this item, but you keep them for me until I get a better house. So what happened? I said, my house got born uh, last week or so. We we're talking. But I said, but I thank God that I'm alive. The guy looks at me. You thank God? Yes. He said, I will be able to say that. Why was I able to say that? The grace of God. Because God spoke and told me that what is coming is better than what is gone. 
Hang on the word of God. When you are in trouble, when you are being persecuted, when you are in trials, when there are challenges in your life, hang on the word of God. Then the grace and the power of God will become manifest, will become strong, evident in your life. Amen. Amen. One of the reasons why God allows or permits challenges in our lives is to prevent us from becoming proud or arrogant. Are you with me? It's a training. One of the reasons why he permits trials, temptations, challenges in our lives is to discipline us so that we don't become proud or arrogant, proud and arrogant our successes to ourselves. Everything belongs to God. Paul said he had a reason to boast in order to but in order to put him under check, under control, God allowed a messenger of Satan to harass him. And then God supplied the grace. Praise the Lord. If God could allow the messenger of Satan to harass a whole apostle Paul, who am I? Who are you? And why it is through this harassment that the grace of God is made manifest. So the grace of God will be made manifest in your challenges when you allow God to take control. Praise the Lord. God allowed a messenger of Satan to harass him and then supply the grace for him to endure. Many Christians today have not understood or accepted this fact. Many Christians have not understood or accepted this fact that being a Christian does not immunize you from challenges. But the challenges will, challenges will come, it will be an opportunity for God to demonstrate his power and love for you. Amen. Because they do not understand, that is why they ask questions like, God, why me? If not you, who else? Should it be me? Praise the Lord. God, why me? When you had a new job, did you say, God, why me? When your wife gave birth, did you say, God, why me? When your son graduated, did you say, God, why me? When you lost the job, you say, God, why me? What have I done? My enemies are after me. When your enemy is not there, when God gave you the job first, praise the Lord. They ask questions like, why me? And they ask another question. What would people say about me if... Who cares about what people say about me? Who cares? What does God say about me? You may say I'm good. God says me I'm bad. I'm bad. You may say I'm bad and God says me I'm good. Then I don't have a problem with that. They ask questions as, what would people say? Oh, how can they hear that I was involved in an accident? Did God not save you? He saved you. Others died in the same accident, but he saved you. Amen. Amen. You hear people ask, God, where are you? Where are you? They say, where was God when my wife died? Where was God when my husband died, when my son died? Where was God when this one happened? Let me tell you where God was. God was where he was when he allowed Jesus to die. Are you with me? God was seated on the throne. He allowed Jesus to die because Jesus had to die for a purpose. To glorify the name of God. They asked God, the man that was born blind, is it as a result of the man's the parents' sin or the man's sin? Jesus said, no, that my father in heaven may be glorified. I want you to know that whatever problems you are going through today, as an overcomer, God wants to glorify his name. Praise the Lord. I have asked God to do whatever he considers the best in my life to keep me under check because I don't want to be proud. Ask God whatever you want to do, do it so that I will not become proud and arrogant. To keep me under check. We read Psalm 33. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down a great Do you know what the rod is for? When a shepherd holds the rod, the rod is for correction. 
When the sheep is wandering away, the shepherd uses the rod to drag the sheep back. When, they are, when the, the, they are facing the sheep, the shepherd uses the rod. So the rod of God is for correction. I'm asking to correct me in every way he knows. Do everything he has to do to keep me on that check so that I don't wander away from him, so that I don't become proud, so that I don't begin to arrogate perfection to myself. Amen. But in all, his grace, love, power will be demonstrated in my life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're not praying for temptation to come because the Bible says, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from all evil. When the evil comes, he will deliver us from them. When the challenges come, he will deliver us from them and take victory. Amen. Then I will become, you will become an overcomer. Amen. My victory is to remain in Christ to the end. Not what we did yesterday, how faithful we were yesterday, or last year, two years ago. How faithful am I now? An overcomer is always in the Lord. You continue to be in the Lord. You remain steadfast in the Lord. You hold firmly to the word of God and you'll be saved. I want us to know that we are more than conquerors as overcomers. Because of this grace given to us, we are more than conquerors. We can overcome sin. In Romans chapter 8, 31 to 39, Romans chapter 8, 31 to 39, Paul was still writing, said, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Nobody. Nobody. Don't be afraid. My village people, this person, that person is against me. No. If God is for us, the question is who can be against us? Nobody. Then why don't you be on God's side? When Moses came from the mountain, he meant that the children of Israel were worshipping the golden bar, the, 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 the image that they made from the, the, the gold, the, the golden calf. He said, who is on the Lord's side? Come to me. Praise the Lord. If you want to be saved, be on the Lord's side. If God be for us, or if we are on the side of God, who can be against us? No one. Praise the Lord. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, how will he not also Graciously give us all things. Amen. Amen. God did not spare Jesus Christ. He allowed him to die. He gave him for us. If he, can, if he could give Jesus out, is it money he cannot give? Is it work he cannot give? Is it health he cannot give? Will he not give us everything? He will. Who, sh who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Don't mind what people say about you. They call them names. They say all kind of things. They are breaking charges against you. Don't, don't worry. No person justifies. Only God. Who is to condemn? Jesus. The one who died. More than that. Who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God. Who indeed is interceding for us. Praise the Lord. That sentence is loaded. That scripture is loaded. Let's read again. Who can who is to condemn? He said Jesus Christ. The one who died. More than that, the one who was raised, who is at God's right hand, interceding for us. If Jesus died, resurrected, and is sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for me, do I have any need to be worried? If you know that Jesus is praying for you, he's concerned about you, do you have any need to be worried, to be anxious? Say, have no anxiety about anything, but with prayers and supplications and thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Therefore, my friends, be on God's side. For if we are on God's side, no one can be against us. A lot of people have fallen, but look at what the scripture says. Verse 35. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation. Will you allow tribulation, persecution, challenges to separate you from Christ? Or darkness, or, or distress, or persecution, or famine, no food, or nakedness, you don't have clothes, or the best of the clothes you want to wear, or danger, or sword. Amen. Don't, these are things that can possibly separate you from Christ. When you see persecution, when you see trial, when you are hungry, when you are tempted, you may be you 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 you, you may feel depressed, and you want to be separated from Christ, from Christ. But the Bible says, "Can should this thing be able to separate you? If you value eternity, what is close? If you know what you are going to gain being in Christ, what is money? Amen. As it is written." For your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. In spite of it, trials, persecutions, tribulations, challenges, sickness, death. The Bible says, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. Through Christ who loved us. Amen. Amen. So be happy and rejoice because you are loved by Christ. Amen. Amen. And I said in verse 38, For I am sure that neither death nor life, angels nor rulers, nor taste present or taste to come, nor power, no height nor death, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please do not let anything separate you from Christ. Not death, not poverty, not persecution, no power, no if words should separate you from the love of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We have victory in Christ Jesus. Our victory is in Christ Jesus. After this, we'll round up for today and continue from where we stop next week. Romans chapter 8, from verses 1 to 11. Amen. Romans chapter 8, 1 to 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because you are in Christ Jesus, you are not condemned. No condemnation, no power, no evil will overtake you because you belong to Christ. For the Lord of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ through the Lord of sin and death. Amen. That's the victory we have in Christ Jesus. Free from sin. If you are free from sin, you are therefore free from death. Amen. For God has not, for God. For God has done what law, what the law, weakening in the flesh could not do, but sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the Lord might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit. But not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their things, their mind on heavenly things. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because you are children of God, you are preparing for heaven, set your overcome sin and set your mind on things above. For where your treasure is, there your mind will be. If your mind is on, on earthly possession, accusation, position, relationship, your mind should be there. You're thinking about it. But if your mind is in pleasing Christ, 
your mind will be set on things on high. Amen. I'm going to stop at this point and ask God, Lord, help me. I'm going to pray, God, help me. Help me to overcome temptations to sin. Just ask God to help you. Father, help me. I need your help. I cannot run this race on my own. Help me, Father, not to abuse your grace that is upon my life. If you are here, you know you are not born again, but you are listening to us on our social media platforms, you know you are not born again. This is the time to do it. It doesn't take any, it's not difficult. Just confess your sins to God. Accept that you cannot help yourself. Ask God to forgive you, have mercy on you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness, to put your spirit in you. If you have fallen before, be like David, who said, Father, do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. If you have backslider, or you are still jumping from sin to sin, one leg here, one leg out, this is the time to ask God to renew his spirit within you. Thank God that you want his name to be glorified in your problems. Measure that problem in your life and say, God, in this problem in my life, be glorified. I don't know if you understand me. If you have a challenge, ask God, Lord, in this challenge that is in my life, let your name be glorified. Simple prayer, have faith. Lord, I have this challenge. I have that challenge. In this particular challenge, in all of my challenges, let your name be glorified. Pray to God. Pray. He says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. We are gathered in the name of the Lord, and I know he's here. Yes, Lord. Wherever the challenge is coming from, remember that Jesus died resurrected and is seated at the right hand of God the Father interceding for you. So don't be afraid. Just tell, to, tell God to glorify his name in your life and in all that you do. Lord, in this church, glorify your name. In my family, glorify your name. In the lives of my wife and children, glorify your name. In the lives of all those that you have put under my pastorship, Glorify your name. We have various challenges. Father, confront those that confront us and take the glory. Thank you, Father. You said no weapon fashion against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we should condemn. Therefore, Lord, this morning I take authority from your word and I condemn every tongue that has risen against any member of this church, any member of our family, in judgment, in the name of Jesus Christ. They have no right to judge us or condemn us because we are children of God. It's God that justifies and it's Christ that condemns. There's no one that can cause a man whom God has not caused. We have not been caused. The cause of sin has been broken in our lives. Therefore, the rock of the wicked cannot rest upon us. In that challenging situation, Father, I pray this morning that you will glorify your name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the health issues that every member of this family, of this church is facing, glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. In employment issue, in business issue, in immigration issue that any member of this church is facing, I say, Father, glorify your name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, in our financial challenges, Lord, glorify your name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In our career challenges, Father, glorify your name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the lives of our loved ones that have not yet known you. Father, glorify your name. Amen. 
Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the growth and expansion of this church, which you have built, which is your church you have built in your name, glorify your name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask heavenly Father that this week will be a week of blessing. Amen. It will be a week of greater relationship with you. Amen. It will be a week that will fulfill our purpose, or the purpose of which you created us, to have dominion. Whenever we step our foot, we shall take to possession and dominate. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray, God, your blessing upon this country, Canada. Pray for the Prime the Premier, we pray, the Prime Minister, the Mayor, everyone at the helm of affairs. We pray for our supervisors in the office. We pray for our colleagues. Lord, that you be with them. Lord, that you will address every challenge in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for our brethren that are facing persecution in one way or the other. Our brethren in Pakistan, our brethren in Nigeria, and other parts of the world. Father, we pray for them. Give them the grace to stand. Give them the grace to resist. In those temptations and trials, O oh God, glorify your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For answering our prayers. Amen. Because we pray and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we stand up and sing our congregational song? Christ is my rock. Are you able to project his song? 